Hey guys, and welcome along to This Week in Photography, in which I take a look at interesting stories happening in the photographic world, cast my world-weary eyes over them, and search for some meaning behind the headlines. This week's show, DJI prepare to launch a new drone, Pixelmator go subscription, a British photographer takes out the richest prize in photography, like a build a phone with beast mode, and a photographer cleverly highlights the Instagram hug of death. Now, never let it be said that DJI is unafraid to protect its monopoly in the drone market. The Chinese company have dominated both the consumer and enterprise drone marketplaces for the last decade through a process of steady innovation. And while American sanctions have dented their ambitions a little bit, they're showing no signs of letting up. In fact, these days, DJI is becoming synonymous with drones the same way Hoover is for vacuum cleaners and Google is for searching the web. And with the increase in popularity of FPV drones over the last couple of years, DJI brought out their own FPV drone 18 months ago. And then, when they realised they hadn't hoovered up, see what I did there? All of that market, they released their FPV controller system separately. With the ever vigilant eye on the whole drone scene, DJI have noticed that micro FPV drones, otherwise known as Cine Whoops, have been getting more and more popular over the last couple of years. So it came as a surprise to literally nobody that word leaked from the Shenzhen restrooms that DJI were going to release their very own Cine Whoop. The DJI Avata, for that is its name, is set to be officially announced on the 25th of August. Therefore, you can fully expect a tidal wave of post-embargo videos to be released by all the usual YouTubers, showing them flying the Avatar around the furniture in their YouTube studios and homes. The design of the drone looks like a homogenized Cinewoop design with built-in prop guards. This is because this is a drone that is designed to be flown pretty much exclusively indoors. Other information that's leaked suggests that the Avata will have about 18 minutes of battery life and will include the same sensor package as the Mini 3 Pro, all of which means that you'll be able to shoot video in 4K at 60p and take 48 megapixel photos of the underside of your sofa. The new drone is rumoured to include the new DJR Goggles 2 headset, which are much more compact than the current version and can be used alongside the weird DJI motion controller in case you want to look like Harry Potter casting a spell. Wingardium Droniosa or something. So beyond shooting Ant-Man style videos weaving through the tables and chairs of your house at high speeds, what purposes might the Avata be put to? And the answer to that question is surprisingly open-ended because of course since you're flying it indoors the government has absolutely no fucking say whatsoever in how you do use it. So you could use it at wedding receptions, concerts, family gatherings, conferences, indoor sports or anything else that takes place under a roof and not outdoors. Venues might impose their own rules on drone use of course and will almost certainly require public liability insurance but it's a commercial undertaking not a civil one and therefore not limited by law. These kind of indoor flights have been going on for some time of course with skilled FPV drone pilots creating all sorts of cool videos in indoor environments. But the Avata will take what is currently a fairly niche scene and thrust it firmly into the mainstream. After its release you can expect a significant uptick in the number of drone shots in wedding reception videos and subsequently, a new style of drone blooper as unskilled FPV pilots fly their Avata right into the bride's mother's face or slam sideways into the wedding cake. You heard it here first, folks. One of the most popular Mac-only image editors is Pixelmator Pro. 
This powerful and Mac-centric application took out Apple's Mac App of the Year award in 2018. And it was the success of that app that provided a launch pad for the Pixelmator devs to release Pixelmator Photo, an iOS photo editor, back in 2019. And while it's a beautifully designed application with a powerful array of features and tools, one of the main reasons it was so popular was because it was a one-off non-subscription purchase. However, the Pixelmator devs have just announced that, in common with many other software companies, they're going to be moving to a subscription-based pricing model from here on in. This has obviously created a bit of a stink with the inevitable backlash from the folks who prefer to buy their software outright. The developers released a lengthy blog post outlining their reasoning for moving to a subscription model. And if you read that blog post in its entirety, as I did, you'll probably come to the conclusion that actually they're being perfectly reasonable. I'll link the article down below. The problem that Pixelmator, and I guess all software developers have discovered, is that established apps do not have the popularity necessary to fund ongoing development. There is an initial feast period when an app is released and then sales trail off over a period of years. In order to temper the anger of the existing Pixelmator photo customer base, They've announced that anyone that bought the app will get unlimited access for free. That's a pretty big giveaway and does mean that all the current users have absolutely fuck all to complain about. It's also worth pointing out that most of the half decent photo editors available for iOS and Android already have a subscription based pricing model. The most popular editor apps such as Photoshop Express, Facetune, PhotoLeap, Prequel, Visco, Canva, InShot, Prisma and Darkroom are all subscription based already and so it could be argued that Pixelmator were just a bit late to the party. The dev team have said that there are currently no plans to move their desktop app Pixelmator Pro to a subscription model but it does seem likely that this will happen at some point in the future. Now, I know I regularly take the piss out of photography competitions and I stand by everything I've said about them. However, the quality of these competitions does vary enormously. And while some charge you $40 entry fee per photo for your chance to win a 10 box of chicken nuggets, some have a more impressive payout. The International Photography Award is bankrolled by the Crown Prince of Dubai, Hamdan bin Mohammed Al Maktoum, and because the shake is not short of a few petro dollars, he does things a bit differently. Firstly, entry to his competition is free. And secondly, should you find yourself winning this particular competition, you stand to walk away with a cool 120,000 US dollars. It's almost enough to buy you your first Leica. This year's competition was based around the theme of nature. And the winning photograph beating out a staggering half a million entries from 205 countries came from British wildlife photographer Henley Spires. It's always hard to know what the judges are looking for in competitions like this, but there's no doubt at all that Henley's winning photograph of a gannet mid-dive is a singularly impressive shot. And after perusing Henley's website, I can see that his award-winning Gannett shot is no one-off. In fact, his portfolio is full of impressive underwater photography, and he seems to have scored more magazine covers than Kim Kardashian. So well done to Henley for proving that experience and skill does apparently still count for something in a world of filters, AI, and composites. And put me down for next year as I'm certain that my highly original photographs of sunsets on beaches will catch the eye of the judging panel and they will press the golden buzzer and send me straight through to the live shows or something. You may not guess it from my youthful visage, but I'm old enough to remember the days when the only person with a camera at a family gathering was that weird uncle who wore cardigans in the middle of summer, smoked a pipe, and was probably a retired operative for the security services. Or maybe that was just my uncle. Anyway, every fucker on the planet has a camera now, built into their phones, 
and they're always in use. There are so many smartphones with good cameras these days that sales of point and shoot or compact cameras have fallen off a cliff. But the phone manufacturers are not done with their assault on cameras and we're not that many years away from a smartphone with a camera that does 95% of the things that a real camera does. And in that regard, Leica have well and truly hedged their bets over the years. You see the Leica logo on quite a few electrical devices these days, and the smartphone companies are more than happy to have such a well-respected brand associated with their devices. But it's not just about logos. Leica have partnered with Xiaomi to create the 12S Ultra, which includes a full one inch sensor and of course Leica glass on the front. The results are by all accounts pretty incredible. With a one inch sensor, this smartphone camera can capture significantly more light than regular smartphones. Oh, and it can shoot 8K video as well. And when all of that's combined with a suite of lenses that includes a 120 mil equivalent zoom and Leica's famous color science with the Leica authentic and Leica vibrant color looks, it makes for a singularly compelling package. The days of the cardigan wearing photographer Uncle might be in an end, but it looks like smartphone cameras are only just getting started. And finally, one photographer has decided to document the Instagram hug of death to great effect. Natasha Di Mahu, sorry if I've ruined your name there, Natasha, is an award-winning Belgian photographer and videographer who creates thought-provoking photographic collections that reflect on modern controversies such as over-tourism. Natasha's most recent collection is called theatre of authenticity and looks at the impact that photography based social networks such as Instagram and Twitter have had on certain photographic locations. As she quite rightly points out on her website, travel posts on social media appear to answer to certain aesthetic and social codes which people are using as if they were actors creating their own online performance in landscapes as visual commodities. And while I might not have phrased it exactly like that, I know exactly what she's talking about. The highly staged poses people strike when they're at some Instagram hotspot look exactly like a weird kind of theater. And beyond the weird social language of Instagram poses, Natasha also beautifully illustrates how over tourism has negatively impacted the serenity of so many locations. Using composite photographs she built up from a condensed time lapse within a single frame showing all the tourists venturing through these famous locations within a few hours or a day. It's clever stuff but if, like me, you enjoy the wild places it's singularly depressing too. As always I'll link to Natasha's website and I suggest you head over there and have a squeeze because the photographs are top notch. And that's all I have for you this week, folks. Have you been eyeing up DJI's little Cine Whoop drone? Or does that Ultra 21S phone appeal more? As always, leave me a comment down below and hit the old like button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to my channel to see more of my content in your YouTube feed and share more dazzling insights from my brilliant mind. Till the next time, guys. Ta-ta.